Okay, let's go with e4 here. e4, and then what is the game plan? Hmm. More Spanish game? No, we have the Philidor's defense. Okay. What do you do in response to this? I need to come up with a good setup. Okay, the exchange variation of the Philidor. Mm. To take with the knight or the queen, I think taking with the knight is best. Now, with that exchange, my opponent gives up the center, gives up their central pawn. The one that was on one of those four is out of there. And my opponent is playing like they have played this many a times. Um, I'm going to take here and work on this imbalance. So there is play on the B file. I wonder if I could just uh, do what? I wonder if I could... Hmm, now this is an interesting idea, maybe. H3, G4, Bishop, G2. I'm going to try that. <clears throat> I don't have a kingside knight. Right? He's out of there. So there could be maybe some problems with the knight coming out and the queen coming out in this direction. So h3 stops the pivot on this square and is looking for this expansion. Now, with it, I weaken f4. But I think it's worth the investment to run with this uh, bishop move. Or is it? Let's see what my opponent does here. I think bishop a6 could be a bit annoying. But it's not without um, allowing this advance here and uh, okay so I guess h6 is my opponent looking to pivot about on this square I do have this pawn around where I could control it I don't know about the bishop move because of e5 and then captures I want to be very cautious by the way about giving up my light square bishop okay let's castle it's very valuable because I have weakened my uh, king side I think without a doubt I want to get this f pawn rolling. However, maybe it's worthwhile to play my bishop here and then tuck it back and then do that. Actually, that seems too slow. So I'm not going to do it. Let's go. F pawn. Gaining some space. Where does this knight go? I think it's going to have to reroute to d7 and c5. If this bishop wants to see the game, c5 is going to have to be played but when it is my knight has this so that's um it's a tough spot for black i think right you would want the bishop to see but it's not without its drawback i get this square and this bishop can't move and if it can't move what is this rook going to do actually maybe rook e8 and bishop f8 is the direction black should be going in but maybe they are now concerned about something like h4 g5 and then i really start to push uh the black pieces around if i control f6 that could be a big problem can it not okay black is taking that move into account bishop and queen are controlling it i do not want to touch this pawn no way i don't want to give these dark squares up so i think that that was a good idea now what uh, on push maybe just bishop here first let's do that bishop here I'm in a position to meet there with this although I don't know if I want to do that right away I think queen d2 rookie one these are hard moves to argue with are they not queen d2 I am then fully developed by definition fully developed means what it means that the rooks are in direct contact with one another in order for my opponent to be fully developed, this needs to be played, and I'm winning a pawn, correct? I have one, two, three, four pieces on it, and there are only one, two, three. In order for this to be in, to be played successfully, or in other words, without the loss of material, there needs to be a fourth defender, because I have four attackers. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. They only have three defenders. So a, a quick head count is revealing that I'm going to be able to win material. This knight's not going to bother me anytime soon. This bishop is unprotected in the complications, but there's not a way to take advantage of it. Just winning material. 
even on time. Now, how would you recapture here? Bishop, knight? Well, seeing how he is still very important to me, I'm going to go with the knight. And if the knight is, and I'm on the bishop right now, so if he isn't captured right now, I could now play c4. And if he's chased away, well, then I could retreat, and the light square bishop exchange won't be happening. So, again, bishop pair, open position. Um, okay, so they're getting out of the way of that. Being sneaky there. What about... this something real calm but wait the bishop could play here <sighs> let me support the knight i said i'd do that why don't why don't i just do it if i took there'd be um there could be a queen capture and then the queen would be on my bishop so this is a, a good spot for that guy what about hmm what do i do Queen C2. No, I'm going to go just a single step. Or no, I want to get out of that pin. My rook wants to be on D1. That's the plan here. Get my rook on D1. Rook D1, and uh, let's see how black is going to be reacting to that. I think rook E8 is a very purposeful move. The rooks aren't doing anything. The black rooks are not yet doing anything. Rook here. And um, in response to that, maybe bishop here. Whoa, my, th was that a blunder? I think maybe C6 was meant. That's got to be a blunder. I can always back it up with b4. And now it actually comes with tempo. They wanted to take back. Um, they want to take back the queen move? I don't know. I think maybe c6 was meant. I clicked on. Oh, I'm clicking on take back again. Maybe it was the c5 move or something. There it is. I think they have to click on take back again. You click on take back now. If they don't have the take back ability right now, then we're just going to have to run with this position. Um, I guess it's not working out there. And it's actually my move. I have to go with it, I guess. I didn't even realize it was my move right there. <laughs> I was ready to just uh, have my clock be spent right there. So, okay. Now, let's just uh, trade. <clears throat> I'm up two pawns. These, This is a passed pawn now. And I'll recapture, I guess, with my queen. Just to cover this dark diagonal. And if there isn't an exchange... Okay, let's do this right now. I'm on the queen. Actually, let me do this first. And then get my queen to f2. Support this pawn. My knight supported with my bishop. Not my pawn currently because I'm opposite the rook. Oh, wait, I'm dropping my h pawn. Ugh. <laughs> bishop takes knight, I'm dropping the h. Bishop takes knight, bishop takes bishop. Queen takes h3. They're not listening to the stream, are they? Nope. Oh, they missed it. They missed this trick. I'm going to have mate on h7. Ah, uh, the in-between move got them. It's mate on h7. I just saw that right at the last second right there. Good game. Let me back up here. And uh, let's see how either one of us could have improved. There is a tournament coming up real soon. Really, really soon. Let's see. 
Okay, so I shoot right for this imbalance. The drawback with it will be, I guess, my knight not being able to access d5 so easily. And the white square bishop's deployment, I don't know if this is all correct. It seems interesting to invest this time to get the bishop on g2 and have some sort of pawn avalanche maybe against that king. I think I'll play it again, actually, if this did come up. I like the position that I got out of it. So I think there might be something else. I don't know if I um, should be going with the knight move right away. Maybe uh, play the moves you know you're going to make anyhow. Bishop e7, queenside castle. Maybe reserve your knight's options. Don't yet, um, because maybe in the meantime, maybe if I know that this structure is not compromised, maybe I then won't be going with h3, g4. Make the moves like bishop e7, the less committal moves first. Castle is another one. And maybe in the meantime, I will not have been going with, uh, or I, I would not have been going with the bishop on uh, g2. Uh, the fiend keto, king bishop. So maybe that's an adjustment. And I think I stand better here. This was um, good awareness, I think. I could very easily see many playing rook e8 or queen d7, connecting the rooks. But I think there is something to be said with h4, maybe. With g5 as a continuation. Well, it's definitely getting critical, because actually after h4, maybe there's h5 and the knight's looking to outpost on g4. So I don't know if that isn't a, a viable option to meet h4 with h5, then it is important to take into account this advance. Let's say rook e8, purposeful, it's a half open file. After h4 and g5, I'm kicking the knight away and I'm taking away this f6 square. I have control over it and I think that could be very troublesome. I kick the knight away, my queen would then have the g4 square bishop here maybe there's already like the rook coming to the h file and stuff like that so good awareness there by black to watch out for this advance the, the knight move right away and this is just losing a pawn so something else right rook here maybe bishop back and uh play it from there maybe rook to b8 some quiet moves but uh small improvements rook e8 queen d7 rook b8 okay um, and also, I mean, at this er last point right here, you could get the material back. Instead of the knight move, take the knight. I recaptured the bishop, and then queen takes h. I was going to be playing queen over here to defend, but then there's queen check. I have the more vulnerable king. I think the tables turn with bishop takes knight. Black would actually be better. But we were both under time constraints, were we not? Okay.